What are the benefits of putting your house in your living trust? Besides the obvious reasons of avoiding probate court and making sure your family receives your house when you die, I'm gonna share with you today a little known benefit of putting your house in your trust. And this is a benefit that you can actually experience while you're alive. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit the subscribe button to get notified whenever I post a new video about living trusts. And by the way, my name is Edmund. I'm a living trust lawyer. I've helped hundreds of families and I've taught thousands of people how to do it themselves. And I'm excited to share my tips and tricks with you today. If you want to learn the whole process of making your own trust the right way without hiring a lawyer, check out my free trust class at freetrustclass.com. The link is in the description below. So really quick legal disclaimer, I'm not your lawyer. I'm not giving you any legal advice. All of this is just information. If you have any legal questions, please talk to a lawyer. So the question you might have is, should I put my house in my living trust? And the obvious answer is yes, if you want to help your family avoid probate court. So the way that inheritances work is that if you're a homeowner and you pass away without a trust, even if you have a will, your family would have to go to probate court in order to receive the house and your other assets. That's just a rule in, in, in the US. And so uh, there's one way to help your family avoid probate, which is to set up a trust and put your house into your trust. And usually you would create what's called a revocable living trust, okay? And so that's one reason. The second reason why you should put your house into the trust is if you want the right people to inherit your house, then you want to put it in the trust. Meaning if there's certain people that you want to receive your house, you, you better make sure to write it in your trust and those people will receive. Okay. So that's the second reason why you should put your house in the trust, because if you do not put the house into the trust. Let's say you do have a trust, okay? You you signed it, you prepared it, it's there, it's valid, it's enforceable, but you didn't put it inside the trust. What happens? Well, I'm gonna explain more about that later, but one thing to know is that you have to transfer real estate into your trust in order for your trust to work. So think of, think of a trust like a box. Um, whatever you put inside this box, is gonna avoid probate, is gonna go to the people that you want it to go to based on your instructions that you've put in this box. However, what's, whatever's outside of the box, whatever you didn't put in, inside the trust might not be governed by the trust when you die. So your trust can say everything to these specific people, including my house, but if you did not put the house into the trust, if you did not mention it in the trust even, then that property, the house, might end up in someone else's hands when you pass away. So it's not just enough to have a trust. You have to put the properties into the trust by transferring title into the trust. So as I noted here, it's not enough to make a trust. You need to transfer the house into the trust while you're alive, okay? This is really important. You have to transfer the house into the trust while you're alive in order for your trust to work and avoid probate and make sure the right people receive it. And so how do you do that? Well, it's by recording a new deed and that's it. So you would, so after you sign your, your trust, you would uh, go to the county and you're going to submit a deed and the deed is going to say that you're transferring it from yourself into your living trust. Okay. And if you have any questions about that whole process, I'm going to link a video on top of this video uh, that's going to show you how to do that. Okay. So it's really important that you put your house into the trust. Now, I just went through the obvious reasons why you should put uh, your house into the trust. I'm gonna go through a little known secret that every homeowner must know, a little known benefit that you can receive while you're alive when you put the house into the trust. Are you ready? Most people don't think about this, but this is one of the benefits of transferring your house into the trust while you are alive. So this little known secret is that you get to protect yourself during incapacity. 
So incapacity means uh, you're disabled physically or mentally, and you can no longer manage your own finances, including managing your real properties like your house. So the question is, what happens to the house when you haven't died yet, but you are incapacitated? Let's say you have dementia, or you're in a coma, or you're mentally or physically incapable of managing your own assets, including the, the house. So it's really important that your trust is the owner. It's transferred into the trust while you are alive. And let me tell you why. So while you're alive, if you put your house into the trust, someone you trust most will act in your best interest as your successor trustee. This means that when you cannot take care of yourself, someone will take care of you and more specifically someone that you trust, that you selected in your trust, will be able to manage your properties for you, including your real estate and your house. And what this does is it minimizes the risk of fraud and financial elder abuse. Okay, there's so many people out there that are being taken advantage of, especially seniors when they're getting a little bit older, let's say their spouse dies and let's say their kids are not around, their family's not around. Seniors get manipulated, they get defrauded, people will, will uh, befriend them and take advantage of them by stealing their money, stealing their house. And so it's really important that in the event that you're incapacitated and you can't take care of your house, someone can step in to take care of it for you and not just someone, someone you trust most to do that. And the only way to do that is to make sure that you name a successor trustee in your trust that you trust the most so that that person will be able to manage your assets and finances and the house for you when you're incapacitated. And again, you have to put the house into the trust in order for the successor trustee to, uh, to act on your behalf as the trustee because the trustee can only manage assets inside the trust. If the house is not inside the trust, then that could be a problem. So what if you didn't put the house into your trust and you're incapacitated, you're disabled? Well, there could be family disputes um, and disputes can lead to litigation. So this dispute could be uh, really uh, answering the question, hey, uh, does this house belong inside the trust? Okay, if that becomes a legal question, a legal issue, then there will be litigation. One side of your family might say yes, one side of the family might say no. Uh, and so there, there's gonna be family disputes that can lead to litigation. And there's a lot of uncertainty, right? Because of that, there's a lot of uncertainty. And of course, there's gonna be a lot of attorney's fees and court costs, um, even if you wanna move your house into the trust. So let's say, for example, you forget to move transfer put your trust into the uh, I'm sorry put your house into the trust while you're alive and your kids or the successor trustee wants to do it for you while you're incapacitated okay you haven't passed away yet but you're incapacitated and you need someone to help you move it into the trust so the successor trustee can manage it well that whole process takes a lot of time a lot of money in order to move the house into the trust when you're incapacitated. So the best thing for you to do is to move the house into the trust while you're alive and healthy, okay? And worst case scenario, if you don't put the house into trust when you're disabled, you might lose your house or you might get kicked out because it might uh, end up in the hands of the wrong people and that person's gonna kick you out, move you to a nursing home, um, sell the house and steal your money. That's the worst case scenario. It's not common, but it does happen, unfortunately. And so you wanna make sure that the people you trust most will be able to take care of you and to, to ensure that you put your house into the trust, okay? So uh, just a tip, educate yourself, okay, on, on this issue. Before you hire a lawyer, before you decide to do things by yourself, really important that you move the house into the trust while you're doing that process of making your living trust. So educate yourself about the entire trust process. If you want to learn about this process, you can take my free course. I'm gonna teach you how to make your own living trust the right way so you can protect your house from probate with confidence and without making mistakes and also protect it for yourself when you're disabled, just like what we talked about today. I'm not here to sell you my legal services. My number one goal 
is to make sure you keep more money in the family and give you that peace of mind to know that you're protected, your kids protected, your spouse protected, your beneficiaries are protected. And so click the link in the description below to access my free class. It's at freetrustclass.com. So just type in freetrustclass.com. Now, before I leave, I want to leave you with this Bible verse. Anxiety in a heart's Anxiety in a person's heart weighs it down, but a good word cheers it up. So uh, I don't know about you, but uh, sometimes I get anxious uh, about things, about the worries of life, about problems, um, about my family, about my health, about my, my business, about my money, my finances, right? The world throws things at you, and so we get anxious. Uh, but the Bible says that when you're anxious, a good word cheers you up. And the best, the best news, the best word that you can receive is that your God loves you. Uh, your God wants to be part of your life. Your God doesn't want you to go through life and be anxious by yourself. He wants to do life with you and remove that anxiety and give you that peace, that supernatural peace that only your God can give you. So I encourage you to seek seek your God, which is Jesus. I, I pray that you will know him, that you will trust him. He's done so much in my life uh, after I received him as my Lord and Savior. And so I pray that for you as well, as well as your family. God wants to give you wisdom. God wants to give you peace. God wants to prosper you. And so when we learn about God's laws, when we understand God's kingdom and know how to operate in it as citizens of heaven, as children of God by the adoption of, of, um, of us through Christ, you're going to experience so much joy, so much peace. Um, it's not just about going to heaven versus hell. Uh, God really cares about what's going on, including your estate plan, including the living trust process. Because in the Bible, it says that a good person leaves an inheritance to, a, to their children's children. And that's exactly what you're doing. Uh, as you're planning to set up a living trust and an estate plan. So involve God because he's the one with the best knowledge. So I want to pray for you regarding that. And um, I want to wish you the best. God bless you. If you have any questions about living trust, please ask me in the comments below. And I would love to share um, my response to you uh, in my next video. All right, God bless you. I will talk to you later.